The national debt has hit $14 trillion. Oil is almost $100 a barrel again. Amazing audio that you will hear the left calling for riots. It is a new year, my friend. This is the Alamo. Today, I choose to draw a line in the sand. It is a new year. It is a new attitude. Get out of the way. You're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. America is at a crossroads. You and I have known it. Every American has known it for about 10 years, some longer, some shorter. Every tragic event that has happened to this country, every bubble that has happened, we have woken up temporarily. And then we've gone back to sleep because we want to believe. We want to believe that it's not as bad as it feels. It's not as bad as they say it is. That we can have it all. That we can continue. That America is somehow or another different. Our gut, however, has told us that it is time to wake up and use what used to be known as common sense. <laughs> Quite frankly, it is what Americans from all points of the political compass meant when focus groups gave every single politician from the left and the right the presidential campaign slogan of change. America knew in her heart and her gut the time for change was here. But we thought it would be easy. It is not. After spending years personally and collectively thousands of man hours in research, reflection, and prayer, my team and I have come to realize that a fundamental transformation of this country is required. It is a powerful, fundamental transformation that is required, but it is also the polar opposite of what President Obama touted last election. President Obama and the progressive ruling class of both parties believe in a fundamental transformation, in the collective planned society. I believe Americans will find the answers themselves. America's answers are to be found with, by, and in the individual American honestly pursuing happiness. It is not to be found in some 2,000-page spending bill. If one is looking for a collective-based solution, it can be found. It can be found in the phrase, America is great because America is good. When we look for our answers in Washington, we stand at their feet and we ask our politicians or our parties to make us good. They cannot. They can only police. But we can. We must. And we will. The secret our founders understood was that America is good because a um, individual Americans are honest. Individual Americans are just and thrifty and responsible and educated and charitable, kind and God-fearing. America is great because America is good. It's not just some trite slogan. It is a deep and well thought out philosophy that has over 200 years of evidence of its truth. And yet we are somehow being told on every level from our classrooms to our newsrooms that America is not good and she was never great. 
That is a lie. It is a lie that has diseased this body so thoroughly that we cannot as a nation survive much longer. I ask you today to take a page from our own history. Take the words from the Alamo and draw a line in the sand. Today, you must decide who you are. You must decide what you are capable of. And you must look to the heavens to chart your course. We as a people, do we, re do we return to the ideas of the past or do we continue to go west to the yet unrealized and unfulfilled promises that were laid out in our founding ideas and ideals? We must choose as individuals and then put those choices into action. We must demonstrate in our action, not our words, to our children, to our neighbors, to ourselves, that it is not policies or politicians, but people that make this nation what it is, for the better or for the worse. That is why this year, beginning today, I as an individual and a private citizen stand at the crossroads and I, Glenn Beck, boldly declare my choice. I will not accept that America's best days are behind her, that there is no such thing as American exceptionalism, nor will I stand by silently as the most charitable nation in the history of all of mankind now apparently needs the IRS to act as our charitable collection basket. I refuse to believe that Eric Holder is right when he states that we are a nation of cowards when it comes to issues of race. No, we are not, sir. I will admit our wrongdoing as a nation, but I will not be a constant apologist for our nation's mistakes. I will look to the future, not to the past. But I will look for historic context. I choose to believe that while many Americans may be ignorant of even the basics of our own history, Americans are waking up in record numbers and educating themselves like never before. One of the first things that those Americans will find is that history will tell them when this happens, Americans change the world. Today, I boldly declare I will no longer look to others for leadership or answers. I will lead. I will lead my family. I will teach them how to be independent. I will teach them how to be honorable, educated, and charitable. With firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, I choose to refound this amazing nation by rediscovering within myself and my own circle of influence, the principles and ethics that defined American exceptionalism. It exists when we choose to live exceptional lives. That is why this year, 2011, my wife Tanya and I will dedicate significantly more of our personal resources to what some will call charity. But as you and I will show this year, charity is nothing less than investing in people because people are the answer. I have also charted a new and I believe exciting course for my company Mercury Radio Arts. I currently have plans on hiring more than 40 people this year as I expand many of our operations as well as creating new divisions that no one in the company even knows until this moment. A new division that will now be called E4 Experiences 
Over the next 12 months, all Mercury Radio Divisions, radio, television, books, digital, stage, and E4 experiences will now focus on what I call the E4 solution, the four E's. The four E's consist of enlightenment, education, empowerment, and entrepreneurship. This company, these employees, I will challenge myself, we will challenge each other, and then we will challenge those who choose to chart this course with us to find out what we as individuals truly believe, challenge what we think we know, and to dig deep to find out what each one of us as individuals and as families are capable of. Today, I put a call out to you. I put a call out to all those who are tired of feeling powerless. I call out to you to commit to become the person you were meant to be, not who you have allowed yourself to become. The father you were meant to be, the mother, the sibling, the friend, the business person, the American, the citizen you were meant to be. As the old story goes, a man decided he would change the world, but he wasn't successful. So he decided to change the country but he wasn't successful. So he decided to change his community, but he wasn't successful. He decided to change his street, but he wasn't successful. So he decided to change his family, but he was not successful. So he decided to change himself, and he was successful. And he changed his family, and his family his family changed and they affected the street. And the people on the street were affected and they affected the community. And the people of community affected their country. And the people of the country affected the world. Today, I ask you to take the first step in our success. The first step in your success. This is part enlightenment and part empowerment. It must begin with you. E1 and E3 of the E4 solution. Unknown to most. I have been working with one of America's premier psychiatric minds. He's a concerned citizen and a good friend, Dr. Keith Ablo. For over a year, we have been talking back and forth. We've been trying to understand the psyche of America. We've been trying to figure out how to get to the solution. And in a conversation that happened last spring between two friends, he asked me, how did you do it? How did you go from miserable, hopeless, helpless, alcoholic to where you are today? I told him. He said, Glenn, you are a case study. He said, it's what every psychiatrist hopes their patients will hear and do and try. We have been working together with a project called The Seven. Together we have developed the seven steps that will help you change your life. I know because they're the seven steps that I use to change my life. It begins with a book that we put out today, but it is much more than that. Get the book at the library if you want. It is a book that is not meant for you just to read. It is a book 
not meant for those who are weak at heart. It is only meant for those who are tired, who are sick and tired, who will not take it anymore. They, they are at the position of life or death. I refuse to live this way anymore. You are tired of being less than happy, less than fulfilled. You want to be part of a life that is bigger than I promise you anything than you can currently imagine. The Seven. In the next 12 months, beginning today, I challenge you as an individual to come to a place where you can say without equivocation, yes, I can. I challenge you because I believe that strong, educated, charitable individuals who can stand on their own two feet, and they stand on their own two feet because they know who they are, and they know what they are truly capable of. They have become the person they were meant to be, not the person they have allowed themselves to become, will be remembered as a collective by future historians, as Americans who once again answered the call and changed the world for the positive again. Today, we turn the page. Today, we begin to lead.